Hello, good morning friends. Myself, Dr. Srinidhi Kumar Acharya, National Institute of Ayurveda, Jaipur. Friends, today we will discuss certain treatment principles related to treatment of child in Ayurvedic perceptive. So, we need to follow certain treatment principles and we have to also be aware of certain things when you are especially treating the kids. So, we shall discuss certain important issues and certain important factors and treatment principles which has to be kept in mind when you are treating the children. Because there will be a lot of question especially when you are practicing Ayurveda in Kaumarvartya or pediatrics. So, there are a lot of doubts and there are a lot of clarifications required and we will try to discuss all those factors in this particular presentation. Number one, see kids should not be treated just like small adults. This is very important thing. Most of the time, so what we will do is kids means they are little adults. This perception is wrong. Kids are not small adults. Kids are completely different from adults. Okay? So, most of the time when you give the medicine to the kids, most of the time we assume that half tablet. If for adults we give one tablet and for the kids you go for half tablet this concept is wrong and dose should be calculated as per the age of the child or weight of the child, not by keeping adult at standard. Okay. So, mentality of the kid is also completely different from the adults and also physiological, biochemical parameters and even anatomical parameters, they are also different from the adults. Therefore, treating a kid as a small adult, adult is completely wrong. Okay. So, when you talk, when, you, when we discuss the psychological aspect, there is a lot of hell and heaven, hell and heaven difference in <coughs> children and adults. So, this factor is wrong. It has to be, children should be treated as children, not as little adults. Second point is, administration of the medicine in children is a big issue. Because children's, children are very particular about the taste of the medicine. Okay, palatability has to be kept in mind. All the good medicines which are available cannot be given to the child because children will not accept it. So, palatability is also a big issue. So, it is our duty to make the medicine palatable to the child. So, here Yukti again works. Many medicines can be given through orally, cannot be tolerated by the children or child and it may omit out. Then the medicine is of no use. So, palatability and administration form is also very much important when we are giving medicine to the children. So, one of the best method of giving medicine and making the child the medicine palatable is Kshirapaka method. Okay. Because Kashapa very clearly says Madhurani Kashayani Kshiravanti Mrudunicha, even Charaka says that Madhurani Kashayani Kshiravanti Mrudunicha, the medicine which is administered to the child should be Madhura. Kashayani, Kshiravanti, it should be prepared with a Kshira medium, Kshiravanti Mrudunicha. Okay. So, Saleha Valeyascha. So, Kshira Paka form is one of the most preferred form of giving medicine to the children. So, many, many medicines which are not accepted by the children can be easily given through the Kshira Paka method. So, you take three or four drugs, make the Kshira Paka by Kshira, following the classical Kshira Paka method and then you administer the medicine. This is one of the way. One more method of administration of the medicine in children is mixed with the eatables. Now, many time mother comes to us telling that I am not able to administer the medicine, he is not taking anything, he is spitting out anything, uh, everything, he is omitting everything. So, here again the common sense of the mother works well. So, mother has to use some common sense and she has to mix the medicine with some of the eatables. So, mix with the eatables. So, chunas can be made into chapati or roti. Okay. Certain amount of the chuna is mixed with the roti and one roti is prepared and that is given to the child. So, it is easily acceptable. Similarly, it can be mixed with the jaggery, it can be mixed with the madhu. So, again the administration of medicine should be made easy and palatable to the child by different methods. Now, one more problem that kashaya preparations. 
we have got very good kashayas which works well in jora, kasa, shwasa and abdominal problems. Very good kashaya preparations are there. The problem with the children is we are not able to administer. So here one of the best method which is followed is you prepare the kashaya and if you give it at once definitely child will not take it. He may omit it or he may totally refuse it after first step. So one of the best method is you prepare the kashaya and give it in the dropper. Okay. 10 drops every time, okay. after half an hour again repeat 5 or 10 drops with some amount of guda in between. So this is one of the easy methods that can be followed when you are administering the kashaya preparation. So use the droppers, okay. of course you have to go for multiple uh, administrations, but it is quite efficient, especially in the fever we have seen, so many kashayas cannot be prepared, uh, given to the child, but just give in dropper, 5, 5 drops in the span of every one hour with some guda in between. So definitely it will work. Similarly, there is one more notion is there whether asava and aristas can be given to the child or not. There are so many confusion regarding this. The asavas will go into cause gastric irritation and some even say that asavas and aristas if you give it, it is an alcoholic preparation and it may cause some problem to the child. See all these, all these notions are wrong. Okay. So there is no such uh, effect on the child. And very important thing is a dose, dose of the medicine is very important. Asava and Arishtas basically talking they are very good fermented materials rather than a medicine it is a fermenting media. So so many atypical gastrointestinal problems which is common in the childhood can be very easily corrected by giving any type of Asava because Asava is basically fermenting and it maintains the pH and it, it helps to grow the intestinal bacterial flora and so many atypical gastric and intestinal problems or chronic problems will be corrected by simple administration of asava. Again the problem is how to administer. Asavas are again diluted, if you want it is diluted and again it can be given through the dropper, by dropper you can give it. So this is one more method. Then you can give the medicines in the form of laddu or modaka, so medicines can be converted into laddu or modaka form and given to the child or medicine can be made into avaleha form. Suppose sitopaladi chuna if child is not taking or rajanyadi chuna if the child is not taking, just convert it into a tablet form or modaka form by mixing it with the jaggery and all or honey and all, then give the child to take it, the child will definitely take it. Okay. So this is how we have to do some small corrections. Then again classics very clearly says that medicine to the child should be given in the form of asana, lepana, pana. Okay. So we have to try to give the medicine in these three forms, that is quite good. So ashana that means in the intake, the normal intake of the child, child used to take so many foods, try to mix the medicine with that food or convert that food itself into medicine, okay. that is the best way. Or else you go for maximum external application, lepa, external application to the different parts of the body, through that we can give the medicine or else pana different panas make the preparation of kshirapakas or paniya, panaka, mantha, etc. preparations has to be done with a different medicine and that has to be administered. So this is about one important fact. Further, there is some issues regarding administration of the medicine to newborn and infants. Okay? So especially after 3 or 4 years anyway we can do something, but especially when you are giving the medicine for infants and newborn, we have to be careful and some extra common sense or tricks skills are required. So infants, Kashapa says that there are two methods of application of the medicines or administration of the medicine. What Kashapa says infants, application of the medicine should be done over the breast area of the mother and then the baby is able uh, given to, given for sucking, okay, allowed to sucking. So that helps to administer, this is one of the way of administration of the medicine to the newborn. Application of the medicine over the breast area of the mother and then the baby is allowed to suck. And one more method is application of the medicine to the breast area of the mother and allow for 48 minutes and then wash the breast and then feed the baby. Okay, here the concept is very clear, these drugs are get absorbed through the uh, breast tissue into the lactiferous duct and the medicine essence is available in the kshira of the mother, stanya of the mother and then the baby is allowed to suck because we know that maximum drugs are passing passed through the breast milk. However, the amount may varies from drug to drug. But maximum drugs which is taken by the mother that will be passing through the breast milk also because ahar rasa 
and rasa, the upadhatu of rasa itself is panya, definitely it will be there in the breast milk and that is allowed. These are the two methods which is explained by Kashyapa and even Yogaratnaga where he says that uh, for an infant or especially the newborn, uh, the medicine can be applied through this method. Either you give the medicine to the mother and that is available in the breast milk, either you apply the medicine to the breast area and allow the baby to suck, either you apply the medicine to the breast area and uh, wait for 48 minutes, wash the breast and then you feed the baby. So, this helps to give the medicine to the child, this is especially newborn. Now, medications to the feeding mother, this what we have discussed, almost all the medicines will given to the feeding mother will pass through the breast milk because rasa is rasa upadhatu is tanya, so it nourishes. Now, again there is one wrong uh, belief that or oftenly say that the infections which occurs to the mother also spread to the breast milk to the baby, okay, because my uh, mother is mother is suffering from uh, what you say respiratory tract infection, can I feed the baby? This is a frequent question of the parents. Now, here the problem is definitely that mother can feed the baby, okay. And what they think is if they feed the baby, the uh, cold and cough will be transmitted to the mother, uh, mother to the baby, but it is not the fact. Through breast milk, the infection is not transmitted. Infection may be transmitted because of close contact with the mother, because when mother is feeding the baby, there will be a very close contact and there is exchange of uh, the respiration, um, expiration, etcetera the air etcetera. Therefore, there may be because of close contact, there may be uh, what you say spreading of the infection, not through the breast milk. So, breast milk is always breast milk, it should not be rejected to the baby, it should be given in all possible conditions except some of the absolute contraindications, otherwise it should be always given to the baby. So, disease of the mother may spread to the baby because of close contact and airborne infection, not through the breast milk. This confusion has to be removed very clear. Okay. Now, some of the intrauterine infections may pass through the blood, but postnatally there is no chance of spreading such infection through the blood. Now, one more way of administration of the medicine to the child is through the basti root and we have frequently practiced this, okay. This is quite beneficial. Many medicines cannot be given to the child, okay. And by basti root, we can very efficiently give this medicine, especially in the patients of cerebral palsy, patients of mental retardation a child with autism, child with ADHD and psychological problem and a child with some disabilities where administration of the medicine through the basti root is quite beneficial, even simple matra basti. So, different oils can be administered in the form of different matra basti that is also quite beneficial. Further, now this is a basic concept given by Kashyapa. Kashyapa says that ahara as mahabhishacha. So, try to give maximum medicine through the ahara or mixed with ahara, okay. So, Kashyapa explained Ahara as Mahabhishajja uh, with this intention only. In child, give the medicine with Ahara as far as possible. Ahara should be modified as medicine, okay. Now, how to modify the medicine as Ahara? Now, fermented item, suppose you are giving some fermented item, uh, suppose you are giving some fermented items like dosa may be there, idli may be there, dosa may be there. So, these are all the food which is prepared by the fermented item. So, these fermented food items are quite good for atypical intestinal problems. So, many atypical intestinal problems can be corrected simply by giving fermented food items. It acts as prebiotics, probiotics or symbiotics whatever you say, but it corrects the intestinal problem by correcting the intestinal bacterial flora. Now, medicine in case of certain nutritional problem. So, here we need to do the fortification of the food. That means, suppose if you are giving milk, child is having some nutritional problem. Now, we cannot give extra amount of the food to the baby because total capacity of the stomach is about just 35 ml at the time of the birth and there are, there are also slowly increases, but you cannot load so many food also to the baby. So, in case of nutritional deficit, what we have to do? We have to fortify the given medicine. We have to supplement a more fortified, that means more energy rich food to the child. So, this is quite helpful in case of nutritional problems. Suppose milk, cow's milk you are taking, that can be added with some oil, that can be added with some sugar that can be added with some protein powder. So, all this helps to increase the total energy uh, of that particular milk. So, it can give lot of calorie by giving small amount of food. Instead of giving one glass of cow's milk, if you mix about any oil, say coconut oil or any other oil, one to teaspoon and mix it with the one teaspoon of protein powder or mix it with one some badam powder, mix it with some what you say the groundnut powder. So, then total calorie of that particular food item will be very high and 
by using a small amount of food you are giving large amount of calories to the child which is quite good in case of nutritional problems. So, this is again how we have to use ahara as mahabhaishanya. Then in anemic problems, okay. So, in anemic problems or hematological problems where you need to uh, supplement more and more cit um, vitamin C and all. So, food should be preferably mixed with the citric fruits. It may be starting from amalaki, starting from other citric fruit like or any um, other citric fruits which is available in the market, you can make use of that. So, this is again how you have to modify the ahara. Vitamin deficiency, suppose you are suspecting, then you can mix the germinated seeds in the food, okay. In the routine uh, meal of the child, you can mix some of the germinated seeds. That also helps for the vitamin deficiency. This is again how you can use ahara as mahavaishaja. Now, Suppose child has got some cough or cold, sputum, upper respiratory infection and child is not able to take the medicine. Then make the chutney, sweet chutney. That means those drugs are taken, they are converted into chutney and some extra jaggery is added and that can be supplemented. This is how we have to modify our food items. Suppose some skin problems are there, then sweet chutney of the bitter drugs should be prepared. Now, we know that Karavelaka is very good for some of the skin problems, okay. Karavalaki is good for uh, liver, Karavalaki is good for blood purification, so many things we know that, but how to administer this? Just prepare the sweet chutney of this Karavalaka or some other um, Tiktarasa drugs and administer to the child in a small amount. Daily when you give in a small amount, it is sufficient. Then liver tonic, leaves added with the, the manda and paya, that means, okay. Now, one more way of giving the medicine is, suppose if you are preparing the rice gruel or any rice preparation or any sambar, you can add what some of the leaves in that preparation and the, uh, the sara of that particular leaf will be extracted by that uh, paya, gruel, paya or manda when preparing, some of the leaves you add and that is also beneficial. Usually in the olden days, this practice was there. They used to add so many leaves, so many twak into the uh, rice gruel and then it is consumed. So, that's, that also helps. This is again how you are using, how we can use ahara as mahabhashanya or make ahara as mahabhashanya. Then certain digestive problems, okay. So many uh, digestive problems. Now, uh, in South India, if you go, they prepare different varieties of idlis, okay. So, how they prepare the idli? The idli is made by wrapping it with the, wrapping that butter with the uh, different types of leaves. They used to wrap it with the leaves of haridra. They used to wrap it with the leaves of vatapatra. They used to wrap it with the leaf of banana. So, like this, with the different use of leaves will be there, okay. So, these leaves can be used for the medicinal properties. So, we are preparing the leaf, but it is wrapped in the leaf, particular leaf, medicinal leaf, and that leaf imparts the medicinal properties. Haridra, tejopatra, kadali, vatapatra, these are commonly used leaf. So, many others are also there. Then, Thwak of chal or thwak of the kanda thwak of certain drugs is added to the main diet like rice, gruel, etc. Especially manda, peya, vilepi, etc. when preparing, we used to add the thwak of certain drugs. For example, udumbara, ashwata or um, uh, arjuna thwak. So, they are usually added to this rice preparation so that it gives the, it imparts the medicinal properties. Then certain drugs are also added in the thirta, usually after puja in every home, there will be Tirtha Prasada will be there. So, in the Tirtha, there is addition of Tulsi, uh, Karpura and so many other Tejopatra, Lavanga. So, so many fragrance drugs will be added in this Tirtha and that also acts as a medicine, okay. When you daily consume it, it helps as a immunoprotective and helps to prevent so many disorders. You just observe the traditional eating methods of the uh, South Indians and then we come to know about all these factors. Now, one more factor is administration of panchakarma in children. This is also a big issue, okay. Many of us uh, 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 get back, uh, two steps back uh, when we talk about panchakarma in children. Can it can be absorbed, uh, whether it can be administered or not, to what extent it can be absorbed, whether it is same to that of the adults or what are the complications. If complication occurs, what happens? So, many such questions will be there. To be frank, I will say we are practicing panchakarma in children. And what I observed is administration of panchakarma in children is quite easier when compared to adults because the children will not have that particular apprehension of the treatment. In Vamana, uh, Virechana, 
so they don't have that apprehension or previous prejudice feeling usually adults are having okay many times after one time administration of womana children may show some resistance otherwise usually they enjoy it okay especially abhyanga and bahya procedures they usually enjoy so this is one fact anyway we'll discuss about that it's always a matter of a debate different opinions of different author is that some say can be given in bala children and some say it cannot be given so that again create more and more confusion now concept of a swatantra and paratantra bala which is given by chakrap dat should be considered here chakrapani he very clearly says that vak samarthyo nivrutir vamanadidam rudutvam paratantrata that is he says that panchakarma procedures can be administered in children okay again he says nivrutir vamanadinam rudutvam paratantram those kids he divides the kids into two types one is swatantra bala another one is paratantra bala so what is paratantra bala who is depending upon other for food for daily activities for care and security so those kids are considered as a paratantra bala and who can walk independently who depends upon himself for feeding that means feed himself and who is not completely depend on the parents for everything okay who can do his daily routine activities he is called as swatantra bala so chakrapani very clearly says that in swatantra bala definitely panchakarma procedures can be administered in paratantra bala nivrutir vamanadinam rudutvam paratantra bala that means if you want to administer it has to be cautiously administered and it has to be less mrudutvam okay so so less severe form of less less vigorous form of panchakarma procedure should be administered now uh there is also reference that excess panchakarma should not be given to the children na ati rukshanam na ati samshodhanam rakta mokshanam so there is no clear cut indication that panchakarma is totally contraindicated in children there is no such thing when they say they say that na ati it should be not it should not be more it should be under limitation by considering the bala of the child kala of the child and strength of the child strength of the disease that you have to perform further ashtang sangra very clearly further says when you want to give the panchakarma to the children it should not be denied you have to give it okay we have got two options one if suppose a newborn baby want panchakarma procedure then what is the best way you go for panchakarma procedures for the mother okay so panchakarma or datri datri nitya virechanam is told that you can give the panchakarma procedure to the mother or feeding mother or datri so that the benefits the stanya will be get purified and baby will be benefited this is one option or even kashyapa says that even for the baby also we can give vamana like procedures as the vishita doshas from the mother comes from the mother comes to the baby's body and god get larger and cause the pathogenesis so to have a good developmental process you have to go for the panchakarma procedure for the baby also I mean, that means child also apart from that ashtanga sangha sangraha very clearly says that there are alternative for panchakarma suppose a child who is a fit case for vamana suppose if you don't want you are not able to give vamana to him and as a alternate you give basti karma okay suppose a child want nasya marshanasya and you are not able to administer because of certain limitation change it with the pratimarshanasya those babies who want vamana change it with the alternate is basti karma so like this in virechana he says virechana is one thing which has to be given very cautiously and given only during the emergency otherwise virechana is totally contraindicated in children apart from that for all other procedures uh, he explains the alternative procedure vamana you are not able to give go for basti okay marsha you are not able to give go for pratimarshanasya okay virechana contraindicated only in emergency and basti basti is the best shishu naam aashishu naam cha basti karmam so for shishu and aashishu basti karma is the best procedure and basti can be very well practiced in children this is very clearly told okay in respect of age whatever you say basti can be very well practiced okay now there are so many controversies regarding basti also because kashyapa there is a discussion between discussion about this basti treat, treatment so some says from the janma eva pravrti from the birth itself you can start basti then parashara says from after one month like that that's a discussion going on but at the end kashyapa gave a conclusion that adhastanu annabuktau 
Basti Karmam Prashasya. That means for all the babies, Adasthana, that means who is uh, on the process of weaning, weaning has been started, a child who is able to stand and sit, a child who is now started taking Anna, Anna Bhaktau, Adasthana. That means the process of what you say, the weaning has been started and he has an on regular solid food intake. Okay. So, that babies can be very well given with the Basti Karma. This is very clear told by Adahasthano, Anna Bhakta. So, it may be in the Kshira another period or another period whatever may be, these are the criteria. The weaning has to be started, child should be able to stand and sit, sit and stand and child should be in a position to take the solid food. Such babies can be very clearly given with the, efficiently given with the Basti and Basti is the best mode of treatment, Basti Reva Amartam. So, he is told that Basti is just like Amrita to the child, it gives the name and fame to the doctor, it gives the apatya that the child to the father and it gives the health to the child. So, these are the three benefits, three people will be get, get, getting benefited by the Basti, very clearly told by Kashyap. Anyway, now Vamana, suppose if you are not able to give Vamana to the child, then it can be given to the feeding mother or Dhatri as I explained earlier. Now, there is one more thing, sometimes Vamana cannot be given to the child because of some limitation. In those conditions, we can again substitute this Vamana by the Sadhya Vamana. Many conditions, Sadhya Vamana, Varasnehana, Svedana, all these things are not required and just Sadhya Vamana, especially in obstructive conditions of the uh, child with the upper respiratory infection. Many times, the collected kapha itself is the main problem. Such condition, you just give some Lavana Taila or Lavana Jala and induce the Vamana that gives an instant relief. So, Sadhya Vamana can be practiced. For some Ajirna like conditions, go for Sadhya Vamana. And Sadhya Vamana is very well practiced and uh, it gives a good result of instant release also, uh, relief is also seen. Okay. Now, about the Svedana. Of course, Kashyapa explains eight types of Svedanas are there. Pata Sveda, Hasta Sveda, etc. are beneficial. Hasta Sveda and Pata Sveda, these are very beneficial for the newborn baby and also to the infant. Okay. Especially in mild conditions of abdominal pain or Tamakashvasa, productive cuff and Shiro Vedana, this type of Svedana is quite beneficial we have seen. Okay. So, abdominal pain just go for uh, Lavanokta Jala with the Svedana, that means immerse the cloth in the Lavana Jala, hot Lavana Jala and just squeeze it and put over the abdominal region, that gives a very good benefit. Similar to the chest area also, it gives a result. In case of Shiro Vedana also, it gives a result. So, like this, you can go for Tamakashvasa also, it is beneficial, productive cuff by Brihas Sainthavadi Taila. Uh, first Abhyanga followed by Sveda and that is also Pata Sveda that is quite beneficial. Next, Nasya. Nasya is also told that you have to give the uh, Nasya to the baby. Kashyapa says that either forcefully you have to give the Nasya to prevent the further complication. If the child is not able to Balath create, that means if a child is not able to receive the Nasya, but you give it forcefully. Otherwise, the disease will spread further and leads to complications. Therefore, Nasya, especially for Nasya, there is mentioning of Katutaila okay, in uh, Kashyapa. So, that can be given. If it is not possible, Nasya is uh, also given by the breast milk itself, Naristanya. The breast milk also it is given. And uh, so, like this, Nasya with Katutaila is also explained. And uh, Matra Basti, one more method, Basti, the one of the form of the Basti, Matra Basti can be very well practiced. Simple Matra Basti relieves so many problems in child. I have seen. Uh, cerebral palsy, disabilities or mental retardation. So, every time administration of the medicine is not possible. So, just go for Matra Basti that gives the good benefit in long term. Now, administration of certain Bhajya Chikisa in children. See again, Abhyanga is one of the best mode of treatment. Many problems instead of giving oral medicines, you can just go for Abhyanga, the problems will be relieved. For example, if the child has got aching pain or inflammatory pain in any part of the body. Then I will prefer a Nirgundi Taila for Abhyanga. Mahavishagarbha Taila for Abhyanga, Mahavishagarbha Taila externally if somewhere Ama is collected, it acts as Amapacha. Mahavishagarbha Taila can be applied. Then pain with the tingling sensation if the baby is having or child is having, go for Prasarana Taila, Abhyanga. Then pain with the atrophy, disabilities and all, cerebral palsy and all. Then you go for Mahamashaji Taila. Then pain due to dry skin, dry skin, yastima, simple Yastimadu Taila Abhyanga, that is quite beneficial. Pain in joints like Amavata, etc. So, Vishagarbha Taila again, very quite beneficial. Fakaroga, nutritional problem, okay. So, ricket, um, that means bones are very weak. Uh, then you go for Rajatayla application. 
decrease the range of movement, disabilities and all these things. In such condition, go for Abhyanga with Sahacharaji Taila or Pinda Taila. Then Mahanarana Taila, that is good in growing pain. So, this is one of the common problem in children that is growing pain. As the evening, as the evening proceeds, usually children say that there is pain. Okay, there is no pathology. This is because of the growing pain. The bones are getting extended up or growing up because of this stretching, there will be pain. Usually, this is this will be seen in the evening hours. So, in growing pain, again, this Maha Narana Taila is quite beneficial. Same Abhyanga can be given locally also. Okay, suppose as I told earlier, bronchial asthma, patient of bronchial asthma, along with the routine medicines, you just go for Abhyanga or Brahas Sainthavadi Taila, Lavana Taila, any Lavana Taila you can go for it, Brahas Sainthavadi Taila, that gives a good result. Similarly, obstruction due to Kapha, there is obstruction due to Kapha, then go for Chiravala Taila, Abhyanga, etc. That also gives very good result. One more Bhaiha Chikisa is Abhyanga, Abhyanga to the Shiro Pradesha can be also given. Abhyanga to the Shiro Pradesha. That means, suppose for example, seborrheic dermatitis. This is also one of the common problem with the children, seborrheic dermatitis, cradle cap, uh, seborrheic dermatitis. So, Abhyanga with Maha Marichaji Taila or Dardura Patraji Taila gives a very good results. Then, some neurological problem is there, then you go for Abhyanga with Kshira Bala Taila or Mahamasha Taila. Okay? So, Bala is a very good in a neurological problem. So, mental retardation and behavioral problem is there in the children. Then you go for daily Shiro Abhyanga. Abhyanga to the Shiro area by using Jyotishmati Taila, Tunga Drumadi Taila. Okay? So, same can be also used as Shiro Pichu. Shiro Pichu can be also used. Otherwise, go for Shiro Abhyanga. Cognitive problems and memory issues are there. Some issues like this. Brahmi Taila is good. Then, Nari Kela Taila is indicated in Jalashi Shakaroga by Bhaisya Jiratnavali along with Ushna Avagaha. That is a type of Swedana, Ushna Avagaha. Before that, there is a Abhyanga with Nariel, the Nari Kela Lava, Nari Kela Taila that is mentioned in case of treatment of Nari Kela Taila. So, these are the different other issues where simple Bahya Chikisa can help to the child. Abhyanga to the facial area, if you are talking, then certain fungal infections where appears in the facial area with white dots and all. So, then Yashtimadu Taila is very simple. Chakramartha Taila, that Abhyanga can be. See, oral administration is not at all required. Simply by external administration, you correct the problem. Next, Abhyanga to the skin patients, especially in Shvitra. Okay, Abhyanga is quite useful, especially Bakuji Taila or Stri Kutaja Bija Taila. So, they are quite useful in case of certain skin patches like Shvitra, etc. Abhyanga over the abdomen near the nabi, this is usually traditionally practiced also, application, atypical abdominal pain which is happening in the abdominal area. So, usually abhyanga with the ghee and hingu is followed and that is also quite beneficial. Further, the administration of bahaya chikisa in children as a shiro pichu, okay. So, because children will have more and more neurological problems, behavioral problems and uh, the cognitive problems are there. So, we need to find out a simple method to go for administration of the um, medicine through the bahaya chikisa. So, Shiro Pichu can act as an alternative for Shiro Dhara because Shiro Dhara is quite difficult to do in children. Be, they cannot I mean, cooperate. Usually they start crying. Sometimes they cooperate, that is a different issue. They are quite useful in degenerative disorders, neurological disorders, and cognitive disorders of the brain. Now, Shiro Pichu uh, can be substituted by Shiro Lepa sometimes. If Shiro Pichu is also not possible, then you can substitute it by, by means of Shiro Lepa. Shiro Lepa of a major drugs in cognitive disorders, fungal infections, local wounds of the scalp, premature graying of the hair and hair fall, etc. So, this can be very well implemented either Shiro Pichu or Shiro Lepa. Shiro Lepa with the Tikshna drugs and Ushna drugs, okay, like Vacha, Pipali, Jatamamsi, etc., with Gomutra and Shiro Lepa over this part. So, that is quite good in case of autism. It is good in case of autism. Shiro Lepa with the Shita, Madura, and Snigdha drugs. So, that is good in case of uh, ADHD, attention deficit hypersensitivity disorder, uh, the shirolepa with the madura drugs so to stabilize the brain, it is required. Shirolepa with the majja of different drugs may take vibitaka, aragwada, ballataka majja. So, this may be quite useful in case of those disorders where there is cortical atrophy, especially we used to practice this. Sometimes we give the majja preparation through the basti also or sometimes through the orally and sometimes even the lepa of the same is applied because the majjam majjana that is the principle. In cortical atrophy like conditions, we used to give this one. So, shiro lepa already we have explained. Sometimes we can go for mukha lepa, some of the problems. Eladi gana lepa, quite useful in fungal infections and some other local problems of the skin. Yashtimadu and amalaki lepa, that is also good. Then lepa over the oozing of the skin patch. Suppose a skin patch is there where the fluid is oozing out, 
then the shangalepa is quite good. Lepa over the dry skin patch, again the oil preparations, then lepa over the reddish patch, manjishtadi, kana lepa or manjishtadi lepa is good. Lepa in case of macules like shitra, usually we can go for different types of lepa, bakuti lepa or gajalinda lepa, gajalinda lepa, they give the good result. Lepa in case of streptococcal and atypical bacterial infections, that can be given by different bactericidal rakshoganagana drugs or uh, the drugs which are having antiseptic properties in Ayurveda. Okay. Hatta bandana, one more type of uh, bahya chikisa viru patta bandana, especially this is quite useful in case of contractures of this um, existing because of uh, different uh, uh, disabilities like cerebral palsy, etc. So, patta bandana by using different vatara drugs, eranda, lepa, etc., that can be very well done. That also gives a very good result. One more important is bahya chikisa in the form of avagaha and parisheka because we have to find some simple methods of administration of the medicine to the child instead of oral preparation. So, go for parisheka. Most useful in skin condition as we have seen, it is most useful in case of skin conditions, the whole body avagaha is quite beneficial. Most commonly used, uh, suppose if the conditions are wet skin conditions with oozing of the fluid, blood or itchy patch, etc. Then simple nimba patra kashaya and panchavalakala kvata kashaya, which is added with some amount of spatika and tankana gives a very good results, okay, especially in oozing problem. When there is a fluid pathology is there, oozing is there, then it is quite useful. Similarly, in case of dry conditions, avagaha with the madura, shita, snigdha, guna drugs is quite useful. Dashamula, balamula kashaya, aragwada kashaya can be used for this. Aragwada kasha means to take the aragwada leaf and as well as thwak and make it into kashaya form and make the patient to sit on that, make the child to sit on that particular tub containing this kashaya and that gives the relief. Prepare the kvata, fill in the tub of lukewarm, make it, make him to sit on this for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever time you want. You, he used to, en, he usually enjoy it, a child enjoys sitting in a tub of water. So, one more thing is Gomutra Vaga. Now, in those conditions with the Shotho Rodha or Swedavaha Rodha or Swedavaha Shotho Rodha, usually Gomutra Vaga give very good result. We have seen in scaly conditions, especially ichthyosis like condition, plain Gomutra Vaga sitting making the child sitting in a gomutra for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, fresh gomutra gives a very good result. So, one of the most commonly used drug in case of pediatric practice is Yestimadu, okay. So, Yestimadu is a multifaceted drug. It is useful in so many conditions in children. It is used in a dry cough because it is kapha chedaka, okay. It is usually in productive cough because it removes the kapha, increases the amount and removes the kapha. It is also a mild vamanopaga for certain condition to induce the vamana, a Yestimadu can be given. And it is taste is also sweet. So, usually child, you should take it. Now, speech problems also, stuttering like problems, estimadu mixed with vacha, etc., give good results. Change in the phonicity of the voice, again, estimadu is quite useful. Then, estimadu chuna is a very good major asana that can be given. Estimadu fanta can be prepared, estimadu shira can be prepared. In fungal infections of the face, scalp and other parts of the body, estimate the thyla is quite beneficial, especially if it is added with some amount of spatika and tankana, it gives more good results. Then it is the best rasayana, estimate the rasayana, it is also a stapana, it can be given as a, a given for long term, you give the good results. Then estimate is the immunomodulator, in those kids with a recurrent respiratory tract infection, estimate can be given. Estimate is a very good in autoimmune disorders, estimate the thyla is very good in atypical skin conditions, okay. So, Estimadu is very good in hypo and hyperpigmentation. See, these are the multiple role of estimadu, simple estimadu in pediatric practice. So, by giving just estimadu uh, in different issues, by looking at the condition, we can treat the pediatric problems. Yes, next slide. Now, there is multiple role of ashwagandha, vidarigandha and shatavari in pediatric practice. This simple thing, again, it is not, not much problematic to administer in the child. Of course, if it is made into kshirapaka, it is quite easier. So, it can be taken as a powder or as a shirapaka in the nutritional problems and uh, both three things are their life promotive, their vayasthapana and their bulk promotive, jivani, abramaniya, etc. So, especially those kids with a failure to gain weight or anemic like condition or deficiency problem, ashwagandha is best drug, okay. Ashwagandha, shatavari, vidarikandha combination gives excellent results. Now, it is also quite good to gain the weight, those usually one of the main complaints, my child is not gaining the weight, this is the most common problem. So, this combination is very good. One more is post fever disability, uh, debility. After fever, child has got weakness, okay, uh, debility. 
So, in post debility conditions also, this particular combination acts very well. Chronic disorders as a adjacent, you can give this combination. Degenerative disorders, especially we find so many degenerative problems in the pediatric practice, cerebral palsy and uh, such um, brain related problems. So, this is very good. Neurological disorders, this is one of the must drug. Then, it is also good for immunological aspects, atypical and typical seizure disorder. There are so many seizure disorders in childhood. Some of them are typical, some are atypical, some of them vanish by themselves. Okay. For example, uh, febrile seizure, a child with a history of febrile seizure, go on giving this particular combination for months together because it is very good, it acts in a multiple way, so that can be given. Now, there is one important thing, anxiety in the children and uh, tension in the children. So, sometimes there may be academic tension, there may be some other tension, social withdrawal symptoms will may be there or type of anxiety and inferiority complex is there or fear complex is there in the children. One of the best drug is this combination, especially Shatavari which is present here. One of the name of uh, a Paryaya of Shatavari is Abhiru. That means, it makes, it induce courage, Abhiru, it is induce a courage in the child. So, anxiety conditions and depression, anxiety condition, this again Shatavari present in this combination acts very well. Next slide please. So, effective treatment of upper respiratory tract infection with the cuff in the child. So, you can, we have to give some antiseptic to the oral cavity in the form of those drugs which are having aromatic smell like menthol, shati or ela can be given. Drugs which increase the secretion and expectorate out that is estimaduchuna. Cuff center inhibited drugs if you want, we have got gojiva, badari, colastimaja, etc. Mast cell inhibition, lot of irritation, dry cough is there, mast cell inhibition required then shirishasava, gairika preparations are there, lagusuta shaker, ras is there, that can be given. Expotrant action if you want, then go for estimadu churna, pipali, vacha, etc. Then mucolytic action if it is required, then vasa is there because all the solanaceae group of drugs, they come contain bromohexin, vasa can be given. Lavana is also very good expotrant. Then to remove the dryness, go for madhurasa drugs, then grata preparations, maintain tone of the bronchial tree, go for vacha preparations, recurrent infections are there, then go for the calculated amount of abraka, rasa sindura or makaradoja because they are Rasayana in nature, so in recurrent infections, it's quite useful. Regeneration of respiratory epithelium, because because of frequent recurrent respiratory infection, what happens? There is loss of respiratory epithelium that can be corrected by a yeshadabasma. This contains zinc and shigru. It contains vitamin A because zinc and vitamin A, these two are very important for the regeneration of the epithelial tissue. Therefore, this can be given. Next one. Now, upper respiratory tract infection with the cuff, you can as a bronchodilator, you can give kanakasava for some sort of steroidal action, you can go for ST Madhu, Marshall Stabilizer, Shirishasava, some protective action, you can go for Kapaketu Rasa and Lakshmi Vilas Rasa in conditions or inhalationally, some of Dhumapana, Haridra Dhuma can be tried, this also gives good results or even simple Nilagiri oil inhalation also works well. Sympathomimetic action and parasympathetic mimetic action, if you want to exert this particular action, Somasava and Kanakasava can be given in the calculated doses again. Okay, to reduce the pulmonary pressure, Punarnama Mandura, Gokshuradi, Kwata, etc. can be given. In case of right heart failure conditions, etc., COPD, etc., we can give these medicines. Some of the common medicines which can be given in case of gastric disturbances in child. See, suppose if there is a omitting, okay, Pratimarga Harana Eva Chikisa, just induce Virechana, okay, give, give some simple Virechanopaga drug, so that will do the work, okay, in form of Avipati Rachona or not possible, just give uh, Ushnodaka, that is anorexia. Hingvashtaka churna can be given because madhu and grita can be mixed together and given. Then aruchi and aversion towards the food, then deepana patana should be given, especially the drug of choice is ajamodadi churna or rajanyadi churna. Then belching is there, hikka is there, regurgitation in children it is common. Simple mayura picha basma can be given or madhifal rasayana can be given or any amla rasa drugs can be given to the child, so that decrease. Then koliki pain, atypical koliki pain will be there. So then drug of choice is again agnitundi vati or rajanyadi churna. Then irregular appetite, this is quite common in children. So, the drug of choice is again Mustaka Arishna and sometime Kumari preparations can be given in case of some because it is also a very good Deepanapachan. Uh, uh, so, Kumari Asava can be given or Kumari preparations can be given. Then burning sensation or irregular habitual uh, irregular diet and treatment of Amla Pitta should be followed. Constipation was the most common problem in the children is constipation. Most of the time I used to advise no medicine, simply take some warm water and add one amount, one, one few drops of ghee and few half teaspoon of glucose powder. 
So, this will relieve the constipation of any atypical cause. That means, there is no need of going in going for any special medicine. This ghee act as a lubricator and the glucose act as a laxative, osmotic laxative and simply the problem will be relieved. So, this is how we can treat. Similarly, atypical bowel disturbances, we can go for the Adimastaka chona and Gandharva chona and even Billo chona. Next one. These are the routine treatment for anemia, Datri loha, loha rasayana, saptamrata loha. Okay. So, this can be given. Only thing is before giving any iron preparation, we have to differentiate between the hemolytic problems of the child and nutritional anemia. Sometimes thalassemia, spirocytic anemia, these problems are quite common in children. So, first you have to differentiate it, then only we have to go for iron preparation because in thalassemia like condition there is the iron load is there, there is extra iron load is there. So, you are diagnosed the patient as anemia, nutritional anemia and giving iron preparation that is a big fault. So, first be sure that this is not a thalassemia like conditions or some other hemolytic problem, this is only nutritional anemia by different investigation and then go for the treatment. Next one. Healing ulcer because usually the child will fall and there will be lot of wounds will be there and uh, the healing is a problem. So, Jatyadi Taila or Jatyadi Grita can be given, Parmani Guttikas, Dashanga Lepa, Doshakna Lepa. Suppose if, the, suppose if the wound is related to the bone and vascular related, then Manjishtadi Lepa is good. Nagabala Swarasa, a simple Nagabala Swarasa over the, uh, it is explained as a Sadhyak Shatahara. So, Nagabala Swarasa over the wound is also quite good. Next. Cracked food is one more problem in children usually. So, first you have to check the footwear, hygiene of the child, mineral and zinc deficiency is quite common that has to be checked. Then Vatavruddhi Lakshana if it is there, then you have to give the treatment. One of the simple method which is followed is Panchavalkala Kvata Avagaha. Over the Pada, Pada should be kept over the Panchavalkala Kvata and added with some Karpura and Spatika over that. Ask the child to keep like that for 10-15 minutes daily and the problem many times gets cured. Next. Abdominal pain, suppose child with abdominal pain, if it is because of obstruction, then you have to go for Shoto Shodhana because abdominal pain can occur because of so many causes. If it is because of obstruction, Shoto Shodhana should be done by Amapachana treatment, Shunti, etc. Drugs. Then presence of the air, if it is the cause of abdominal pain, then you have to go for anaerobic treatment and drug of choice is again Haritaki or you can go for sometime Aragvada or it causes Samsana, Aragvada can give. Then simple hot water also sometime helps. Then indigestion is the cause. Again, deep anapachana treatment should be done. Constipation is the cause of abdominal pain. Then go for the laxatives or warm water, ghee, etc. Or aragoda can be given. If altered pH is the cause of colicky pain or abdominal pain, then takra should be given. Takra is takram, shakra se durlabam. It is the best medicine. It increases, it contains natural lactobacillus and all the atypical intestinal problems will be get relieved. Then prepare chuna and give the irrespective of any condition. Next one. Medicines for seizure disorders. Seizure disorders are quite common in children. So, a transclaser or neurocorrective action should be done in case of um, seizure disorders. So, my uh, prescription is Ashwagandharista, Sarasdharista and Chandanasa. Any of these things can be used uh, in case of uh, this seizure disorders. Okay. Ashwagandha is a must drug and Sarasata can be added according to the situation. Gritha preparations can be given because see, it is very clear in the contemporary medical science also they say that ketogenic diet will decrease the chance of seizure. Okay. Ketogenic diet when you provide the chance of seizure will be get reduced. So, Gritha preparation has to be given here. So, Panchagavya Gritha or Maha Panchagavya Gritha, Kalyana Gritha, Brahmi Gritha, Ashwagandha Gritha, any Gritha, one or Gritha preparation is must. Next one is major drugs. You have to go for the major drugs also in Shira form. Vati, can go for Smriti Sagar Rasa, Manasamitra Vati or Medya Vati etc. Then Rasayana should be given. Uh, I also prefer to go with the Kushpan Rasayana or Amrita Pasha Gruta as a Rasayana drug, it also helpful. Shiro Pichu, Shiro Pichu by either using Hima Sagar Taila or Jyotish Madhidama. This is a, a typical prescription for a child presented with the seizure of any cause. Again, severity has to be tested time to time. Next. Some of the Rasashastra preparations are there which has to be very cautiously used. Okay, Gandhaka Rasayana is there, Lashuna, it contains Gandhaka, so that can be given. Abhraka Sattva can be given in conditions of degenerative conditions. Then Trivanga Basma, especially uh, for uh, mineral deficiencies, Trivanga Basma, can, Trivanga Basma can be given. Kasisa can be given for a healing. Then Kampilaka, uh, for given for worm infestations and retina property, creamy, etc. Patika, 
Sputtica is one of the important drugs that can be variably used. It uh, uh, prevents the bleeding. It is having cleansing action. It is antifungal. It is antibacterial, and uh, it has got multiple effects. Sputtica and Tankana. These two drugs can be very low. Tankana is also called as Balasuda because Tankana is quite good even in fever-like conditions to reduce the fever because it is Shitakana. Okay, next. One more is amlapita like condition can be treated by Avipatika, Chuna, Godanti, Mukta, Pravala, etc. Everybody knows this. There is no much specific things about. Next one. With this we conclude. These are some of the common treatment principles which are followed in pediatric practice and common sense works more, lot. Lepa, Ashana and Pana should be given more importance and uh, minimum drugs has to be, mini, minimum palatable drugs has to be used in palatable, uh, in pediatric practice. Not, we should not load the medicines. And especially as Kashyapa says, Ahara Mahabhaishajja, so maximum drug should be given through <coughs> Ahara, okay. So uh, that is the intention. Anyway, time to time correction has to be done, modification done. I am giving a general idea from physician to uh, physician, the idea will going to change. Anyway, this gives the a brief general idea of a treatment principles of a uh, Kaumabhartya and my main intention is to clear some of the doubts and the wrong notions which are present in general population. With this I conclude, thank you very much.